Hi everyone, this is Joanna Summerscales from the ET Newsroom and I wanted to share with you this very nice little story which I first heard from Peter Vincent who I am working with on a little series called The Dowsing Detectives and I think that you are going to find that absolutely fascinating when we get it out there. In the meantime, Peter told me about this little story that he experienced or witnessed with his wife Elizabeth and I asked Elizabeth if she would join Peter on camera to share what she remembered of the event. So this is in Canada a few years ago and I hope you enjoy it. I am delighted to welcome Elizabeth Vincent for a, a, a little sharing of an experience that they had when they were over in Canada meeting some relatives and this was way before Elizabeth even knew, well, knew anything about the UFO ET side of things. And I think, Peter, you may be just be burgeoning into all that information. Yes. So we, there was a very interesting thing that happened, which you both were witness to. And that's why I thought it would be just great. It's only a short story for you both mm -hmm. to reflect on that so well the story starts having discovered long lost family in Canada we were invited over so all the bookings took place but because I'm a remote viewer and I work with colors and numbers and I had had this uh, UFO interaction for some time uh, from 2003 onwards the day came for the trip so on the airline I always like to be beside the the window you know and it was like three seats three seats and then three seats it's a big um, aircraft to Toronto. I noticed something outside the aircraft. There was a contrail just off the wing. I mean, no more than three or four hundred yards perhaps out. <clears throat> but it was following, or the aircraft was following something that was already in front. And it was a one single contrail. Now we were over the middle of the Atlantic. Now for a jet fighter to be out there, it's just a little bit too far out, I think. So I was rather surprised to see that suddenly it did an L shape and went vertical up. And I thought, I know what that is. And so I thought, well, OK, companionship on the Guardian's travel, you know, because you can ask for an escort, actually, which I learned many years later when I do these researches in the lower Adriatic area. In actual fact, coming back, I found about 10,000, because we were up about 30,000 feet going up the Adriatic, <clears throat> and about 10,000 feet above the cloud level was this enormous ball of light, about 360 foot in diameter, but for a much smaller craft inside, <clears throat> and it sort of followed the craft. And I realised <clears throat> that's what a lot of people see from the ground upwards, but I was seeing it from down upon it. <clears throat> Another time coming back, there was an enormous shadow following the aircraft up the Adriatic until it got to Venice <clears throat> and then it dissipated. But yeah. that was a big craft. So well, that yeah. was a sign going across the Atlantic. <clears throat> so we met the family and uh, introduced. <clears throat> and I met Charles, the late Charles, who then introduced me to some of his uh, friends and one of his lady friends. She said, oh, we have UFO activity out here. She said, um, on the Niagara, once a disc came down and just sucked water up out of the river whilst we were waiting at the traffic lights. <laughs> just came down, sucked water up and flew off. Now, this wasn't a seaplane that sinks, that sucks water up for a forest fire or anything. This was an actual UFO disc. He said another time we'd seen them hovering above the power lines on the Niagara Electric Complex, sucking electricity up out of the uh, thing. So, you know, this is, this is going on all the time. <clears throat> so anyway, we met members of the family and we went round here, there and everywhere. We even went down into the Niagara Hydro Electric System down under the ground and saw all the turbines working because one of the family members worked in there knew a lot about it. One day in Welland, where we were based, we went out for a walk around Welland through the park and everything. Rather than coming straight back for tea, we, it was a bit of a long walk, so Elizabeth and I sat down outside the flats on some benches that were provided into the door coming in. And I noticed this gold van coming, a small van, pure gold colour, 
with some people in the front driving extremely extremely slowly but you see you were coming into the flats it was a private road into the flats and then it would be an exit out the other side onto another road so there we were sitting down and I looked at this thing well first of all the driver looked a bit strange he had a sort of a funny hat on but his nose came straight down so terribly low very very pointy unusual you could say it's similar to what the Egyptians would have been if they had a big skull sticking out the back with the sloping face. But next to it was even more surprising, this little figure with great big blue patches for the eyes and black eyes in the middle and some looked very pinky grey colour with ridges across the forehead like this and gave me a wave. It was just, the, the arms were so stick-like just stick like and it was very very small sitting next to this driver i mean it sounds it like was, this van was really close yes it was yes i wished i had my camera <laughs> you just don't think about this at the time you know and the thing is it was deliberately done to catch my eye when i was sat there and you and then i, I sort of looked at this figure sitting in the front that I thought it was a child, but it probably might have been a, a young girl. I don't know. And I remember telling Peter, I said, gosh, she does look so ill. I wonder if she's got cancer because she is so white. Is she having some sort of chemotherapy, radiotherapy? Mm. Uh, and, and then I left it to that. I never thought anymore. Well, it was because the arms were so thin, stick-like. She really was very yeah. thin. And, and quite frankly, the colour combination just did not give the confidence it was human at all. But it was alive, there's no doubt about it. And that it drove past us slowly and it gave us a little wave out the window. And then by the time the penny dropped, <laughs> you know, because although it went past quite slowly, and I suddenly realised, you've shown yourself. <laughs> and... And the van went down there and we sat and talked. I said, do you see what's just happened? I don't believe it, you know. <laughs> it's because, you know, uh, you see these things and it's like the sphere out of the aircraft window, you know. Because quite often when I go abroad, I always ask for an escort. You know it's in dimensional terms, but they will conduct that. And they will always be on site where you are. And you know as well as I do that because they're in dimensions, they can pop out of these dimensions. So quite often they take things. I won't say nick things, take things. So they will pinch one of my rods every now and again if it's copper or bronze. Mm, they Brass. pinched one of mine yeah, too. Yeah, a pair of them right <laughs> under your nose. Yeah, that uh, is my fault because <coughs> I was carrying it. And it just disappeared out of oh, the yeah, carrier bag. My fault. And <coughs> the thing is that they also leave things for you because they can up and down the dimensions so if you're looking for something they might help you look for it by finding it and then leaving it for you so there i am walking along the beach edge and knowing there's nothing there whatsoever absolutely nothing and i go back to elizabeth who might be on a sun lounge we'll have a chat and i go back there and on a rock staring at you is this object oh my goodness gracious me you know what what <laughs> Uh, you know, that wasn't there then. Nobody's been there. <laughs> so <clears throat> they do leave things and take things. And I've heard this from other people who, who get involved in these sort of things, that they can, in the houses, they've seen things moved. And they've also seen things left for them. Never left me anything. <coughs> no, no. Uh, the lottery numbers would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the thing is that, no, getting back to this, with the stories about sucking water up, the power lines... The contrail across the Atlantic in the middle and then going straight up. So whatever it was would have been impossible to do it for a conventional aircraft. Absolutely impossible. And so, can I just ask mm, yeah. you, going back to this this van, which seems a really incongruous yeah, thing yeah, yeah. that they would be somebody... I mean, I don't suppose it was really a van. I mean, you, you, well, you it know, was a, it was a, a vehicle. A, a vehicle. Looking it like a, a van. A vehicle. Yes, but, but um, look, this... Did it have an engine sound? I'm not being... Oh, very, no. very purring, very slowly, yes, yes. So you could like hear... And he, he, like he, he went like this. He didn't look at me at all. He was just silhouetted like this. Oh. And she, or it, was... Uh, 
you know. <laughs> but I tell you what, if this was a mascara and paint job round there, it would have frightened anybody. <laughs> I mean, you know, he wouldn't have bright blue round here oh, right. and black eyes with a white thing in the middle, you know. I mean, they and sound they, like they're, 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 they're... two entirely different yeah. species. Uh, yeah, yeah, just quite. Yeah. And I think that's because I was dabbling in the codes and things out there and they knew damn well that they were... They thought they'd pay there. you a, a nice yeah, friendly yeah. visit saying it was us up there who yeah, were yeah, escorting yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, 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 quite. That's the only conclusion I can come to and in view of all the other experiences I've had. And another experience too, that communicating with things, you can ask. Now, we've been going to this same area for doing research for nearly 20 years and but not always you know doing this sort of work it's just something that developed over the years but always looking at the same area because it was obviously an ancient temple at one time and it was under the sea now but it yeah. was on land <clears throat> so there are exciting things you can photograph you know I mean the thing up there which you probably can't see is an angel basically which washed up which yes no. okay. <clears throat> But the thing is that contacted with somebody and I said, I'd like to meet somebody on the beach, please, by mind telepathy. And I was told that it would all be in black because I wanted to find out what it was I was communicating with. And I was working on the beach and all of a sudden these three people come along, all dressed in black and a young lady. And they said, here she is. <laughs> so, so I immediately knew exactly what this was. So we had a little chat. Oh, you did? You did? Meeting you. And they walked off along the beach. In that what, what, what did you say to one another? Well, I just said, um, well, I, not much. <laughs> I mean, you don't sound it. Don't. I mean, did they look human yeah. or? Yeah. Yeah. You look human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one day I was sitting on the, st uh, going out early in the morning. Yeah, they look human, yeah. But looking on the morning, there was a lady observing me, which I only picked up when I was doing some rodding and things. And she said, I've been observing you, extremely interesting, but you need to be very careful. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. so have you seen anybody in and out of, say, the said hotel? Oh, yes. No, I, well, a further research in years later, I realised that we were seeing an awful lot of very tall people. Very, very tall people. I mean, seven foot. No, no, oh, no, well, no, 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 no. no, no six they, foot seven or six foot seven, eight. Well, that's, that's not that's far, not far off. Seven foot, is it? I mean, you <laughs> know. Seven foot. But they were in large groups, males and females. And very fair. And very fair, yeah. So they would appear let's say in the evening, coming and checking in, and then they would be around about a day, and they'd just, yeah, gone, not on the beach at all. So I thought, well... Went in black, were they? No, no, no. no, no. But, just but, summer but, clothes. But, but summer clothes, yeah. So I thought, well, I've heard about the Nordics. So I thought, well, I wonder if there's a base on this island... So I went over with the Nordic code. In fact, I picked up an area that were responding to silos. Oh. And I decided upon myself to find out when it activated from here. And I noticed that when it activated, the energies from these things then traversed to the hotel. Oh, that's interesting. And then they would then traverse from the hotel to the airport. And then at the airport, several trips, one went to Italy, one went up to the um, Hadron um, Collider experiment in Switzerland. Switzerland. Zurich, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And I found that the Nordics responded in the Hadron Collider. Now, if anybody looks at the Hadron Collider set up in Zurich, you'll see it's in the shape of a rocket with two exhausts for the car parts. And okay. in the middle is a round area of no buildings and then there's buildings around. And these Nordics were responding all over the Hadron Collider. So I realized that things were coming in, going to Italy there, so they're getting knowledge from another source. 
And they were also going to Italy Exciting. to another area that had a huge, great round thing in all, it must be about 30 kilometers round. And then the five rings, like the Olympic Games, which I think is a symbol for a car. Is it the Opel or something? Oh, Audi. Audi, Audi. right, yeah. yeah. So it looked like an Audi thing on the on the landing craft area there. And the helicopter used to take off from the airport. And I followed that through on the map from here, and I found that it landed on this site there. Oh, how interesting. And so then I found, and one day I was at the airport leaving, and I found an Egyptian Hercules aircraft there. So... I decided that I wonder if Egypt has anything to do with this as well today. And I found that there's a complex uh, west of, well, if you look to the Med in Cairo in that direction, to the right in the desert, there's a lot of round complexes there. And that there's uh, obviously um, things going on there as well. So there is a lot going on, I think, of things coming into our dimensions from outside that we wouldn't see with a telescope no. because they're they're stealthed and they're coming in and exchanging information and taking things out probably uh, and nobody knows and of course this is where viruses and bugs can come in because <laughs> well true no yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That I mean, is from other things true. that we have no protection against yeah. you see this is no, the no. point so this is a wealth of information dug up and suspicions and hundreds of codes that I've got that can detect these things yeah. And each code is I is specialist just for that one subject yes, matter. Yes, unique. Mm. And yeah. what is interest? If you have radionic numbers, you can really only use one code at a time. Yeah. Whereas with the color bar codes, you can have at least five together, all doing different things for the same subject matter. Yeah. But if you put a wrong one in there, it kills the whole lot. Yeah. So no, yeah. that is very interesting. Uh, so the comu- the mind's computer is actually working and double checking what you're doing. Yeah, I, and I have to go back mm, now. Yeah. Uh, we'll pick up on a lot more of this in in, uh, in other programs, Peter. I just want to go back once before we finish to Elizabeth, just to ask, having seen that uh, unusual person or people in the in the van Elizabeth all those years ago, did you, uh, knowing Peter's growing interest, did it occur to you it might be something no, from other realms? It never did. No, and he really never did. I thought he was a. Person, very sick person. He was a very sick person <laughs> who was, because I remember telling Peter, you Ash think? and Grey. Ash and Grey, yes. I said, you think she's having <laughs> chemotherapy or something or other? She looks so well. You yeah. never told on me that it could be anything else but that. Have you, well, I just want to, say, to ask if you if you have any ideas now. Do you, do you think it could be something different? I still don't know to this day. No. No. Do you really, think I couldn't tell you. Okay. I really could well, not. I wouldn't like to. One of the things that's interesting here. He might have yeah, something to yeah. say about this. Well, <laughs> well, I, um, yeah, yeah, but one of the things I'd like to say is. The about, jury is out as far as I'm yeah, concerned. One of the things I'd like to say is the misconception of knowledge that we're being provided with. The Blaze Channel on television and yesterday is providing a lot of programs called Ancient Archaeology, UFO research and things like this is hour after hour after hour going through files and witnesses and things and so much of it is what i found independently that's the point but you know it's um it's just beyond a joke that people would try and spin a yarn i mean as far as humanity is concerned they say that we might only be able to go back umpty uh, a few million years because fossils, you know, there are no fossil remains of humanity and they're looking for bones. So they go back to the African plains and they find the bones. They say, oh, to a million, 300,000 years or something like that. However, <clears throat> in this favourite little area that I like looking, I found some things that look like a human foot in stone, a hand, a hip joint. This is in the lower Adriatic. <coughs> yeah, and yeah. at the end of a bone muscle. Yeah. And now I took one of these up to a bone specialist in my wife's hospital. She was working, and he said, that is a rib cage. He said, I've never seen one so big. <laughs> but you can see the muscle area. And he said, how old is that? It must be <coughs> extremely old to fossilise. So basically took 
some of these things up when we were tested. But first of all, we have a firm... To the Natural in, History Museum. Yeah, yes, yes, but mm -hmm. we have a firm in Tunbridge Wells that's Helios. They do... <coughs> oh, the homeopathic, homeopathic company. And mm -hmm. they have a specialist in there who was quite good. And I said to him, look, what's your opinion of these? And he said, well, <coughs> lay them down and we'll have a go over. And he said, I think they're at least 20 million years old. So I put these things in the box. I took them up to the Natural History Museum. <coughs> and she looked at them and she said, well... The area that you're talking about, they said for that to happen there, they've got to be at least 20 million years old. That okay. was the second thing. And I'd actually doused them against the colours of 20 million years. The big problem is that one of them's female and one of them is male, human. Ah. So there are fossils of a foot and a hand, a and piece a of bone and a rib and a hip joint, probably from a baby, that is human, cast to stone. In 20 million years. It has to be at least 20 million years old. I mean, we know that Pompeii erupted and encapsulated people, but they were hollowed out into a different form. They weren't fossilised, basically. And we're not talking about that at all. We're talking about people who are dead and buried, who have turned to fossil, much like animal bones and things that you pick up that are fossils, you know, <clears throat> and the sea has just washed them up, you know. And so, it seems that oh, you've got quite a lot of material, which we'll look at over yeah, time yeah. to come. But uh, for the moment, I want to say thank you both very much. That's absolutely uh, fascinating. As usual, Peter, a wealth of information. Mm. Elizabeth, thank you for sharing part of the story and just to corroborate the fact that you saw what you saw. Yeah. Uh, whether you know what it was or not, we don't know what yeah, it was. Know, yeah. But that is the biggest, great. Of course, the biggest thing for another <laughs> chapter for another chapter is when I was working in this little shop part-time. It's another chapter, dear. Yeah, the uh, cat guy turned up and uh, wanted a compass. What? <laughs> no, it goes on and on and on. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. <laughs>